everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take your imported STLs uh, that are in um, InLab you into um, InLab Splint and design a splint. Uh, if you remember in the previous tutorial, we showed you how you can set the administration phase to be able to select a splint here first and then just select whichever arch that you're going to be providing it for. Just remember that we're going to be choosing a five axis instrument or if you're going to be milling out your MCX5, then that's an option. But we're going to choose the five axis instrument if we're going to be 3D printing. I'd just choose high performance polymers and it's saying milling because we don't have the 3D printing option there yet. So we've brought in the scans, we've got to the model stage. The next stage from there is we're going to click on this little Densply logo here and we're going to click the apps and we're going to click on InLab Splint. And that will load up the InLab Splint app and set everything up for us to work through the workflow according to uh, whichever arch that we've set that we're going to design the splint for. So you can see it's already started this process um, and I'm just going to rotate here so we can see and similar to the other programs we've shown with how to design a splint it goes straight down from the occlusion uh, for me personally I like to tilt this so it takes a little bit more of the undercut away from the buckle side and we're just going to tilt this to be able to see it um, where we want it to go to rather than insert it with the view that we have we're going to manually move this little joystick direction arrow to uh, select the undercut and actually do you know what it's a really nice way of controlling it because you can make very minor adjustments and see what the effect is straight away so uh, I do like that on InLab and uh, what I would suggest is try and have it so that you don't have a gap like that that's just going to be causing problems so uh, again we're just going to um, move this but what the nice thing of doing this is that we don't have to move it and then select it select it with the view and then have a problem that you know we have to keep moving it back and forth to be able to see those problems we can just move so we can see where that problem is here and then just tilt it and just make slight little adjustments there we go so now we've got rid of those undercuts buckley but we still have undercuts there they're just in a different direction and I, and the reason why I like that as well is so that when this insertion axis is coming in at a different point than the occlusal direction then it'll just help retention a little bit okay so the next stage there we're going to click on to check the block out so it's going to automatically generate the fitting surface from this by blocking out the undercuts um, that we're going to that we've just selected with the insertion axis So let this do its thing. Once it's finished blocking out, then it'll allow us to move on to the design. And you can see on the top right here, what we didn't go over is we've set that undercut to 0.2 millimeters. So check blockouts. This is the blockout that it's designed here with the undercuts that we have. And that's okay, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna go now to the design phase going to open the jaw a little bit and let's open it 